Hello and welcome to a video on the Planet Zack YouTube channel. As I begin my retrospective on the Sonic the Hedgehog game series, a new title loomed on the horizon. It promised a more open experience and perhaps even a more mysterious tone. I had hoped I might be able to finish the entire retrospective before I ended up having to play this game, but time got the better of me and I didn't get nearly as far as I thought I would in the last year or so that I've been uploading to this channel. I do like to experience mainline games for the first time without any distractions, so I didn't end up filming any of the gameplay for this video. And this video is only going to cover the very first island that you experience in this game, because that's as far as I've managed to get in the last month between having to work and going to school. But I hope this gives you a good idea of my initial thoughts on this game, because let me tell you, it is definitely a pretty solid experience thus far. The game starts you off in an opening area, which initially is quite contained, but it leads to a much larger area that you can openly explore. The Breath of the Wild comparisons are rampant, and I can see that this location definitely seems to be in line with that sort of locale. However, I was pleasantly surprised when the trailer that revealed the second island appeared, because it looks like we're going to be experiencing at least two separate types of environments with different terrains and landscapes. So yes, the first island, which I believe is called Kronos Island, is very much a grassy field, open plain type of place. There's a river running through it, and you can actually go into the water. Obviously Sonic can't swim, so you have an air meter if you're ever underwater. But you can also fall off of the island into the surrounding ocean, which will prompt the game to put you back at the last area you were in before you fell into the water. Other than that, there doesn't seem to be any kind of real life system. You just sort of play around on the island until you are able to unlock the next cutscene or encounter the next boss. And the bosses are pretty good in this game. There's smaller enemies, which you can take down with smaller attacks, which you have a skill tree that you can learn new moves from as you collect skill points. And I've actually almost completed the skill tree having stepped onto the next island. So it's not very difficult on the normal setting, but I chose that because it advertised itself as being a nice balance between gameplay and story, which is what I wanted out of this experience. I may at some point try hard mode or something like that, but for now I'm just going to stick with the normal mode and experience the game in the most balanced way that it seems to have put forth for us. In addition to the smaller enemies, you have the more mid-sized or larger than small enemies, but still able to be handled by Sonic in his normal form, and then you have even larger enemies, which you need to be able to take on as Supersonic. Which, the game mixes things up a little bit. You become Supersonic before the end of the game. And that's how you defeat each Titan to move on to the next area. I'm trying to be as spoiler-free as possible. I don't think that's exactly a spoiler. I think that's something that the gameplay kind of makes clear that you are working towards. As far as the gameplay is concerned, there is, like I said, this open world, and it has your classic Sonic, or, well, I know not classic Sonic, but classic to at least the modern iterations of Sonic. The rails, the dash pads, the springs, you can traverse this area with those all around you. And some of the ways that they open up new paths are very clever. And then there are puzzles you can solve, which most of them don't do anything besides reveal more of the map. But even without revealing the whole map, I still was able to get by. And I think that's very important. 
in addition to the open areas you can explore, you have the cyberspace areas, which, yes, they mostly hinge on previously explored themes. There's Green Hill, there's Chemical Plant, there's Sky Sanctuary. There's also, like we saw in the trailers, the city area. And I know people were freaking out because a lot of them were reskins of previous level design. But I think they play well enough for what they are. And you really only need to play them in order to unlock the Chaos Emeralds. So I would say these are functionally this game's version of special stages. And I actually prefer this over something that's completely unrelated to Sonic gameplay. I cannot stand the special stages in most of the other games. And I've never beaten most of them. I just think it's ridiculous that something story-related is locked behind gameplay that isn't even, you know, part of what you would normally experience while playing the game, so you can't get better at it. I will go more in-depth about that in a later video, but for the time being, let's just consider the cyberspace kind of like this game's version of the special stage, and each area will have a different theme, but I'm sure there will probably be some repeats eventually. And of the four themes that I've experienced so far, I thought they were pretty well done. And the city area even has some gun robots in it, which is pretty cool. I like callbacks to previous games. I know they've gotten a little bit heavy-handed with those in recent years, but I still like to see things like that, even though I know they get on some people's nerves. But a lot of this... The whole series kind of plays around with what's real and what's not. And this game definitely taps into that whole dynamic. I know we just had a whole game that kind of played around with that with Sonic Forces. And that one didn't do nearly as well, even though I personally enjoyed it. But even if you didn't, I still think this one might appeal to you. And the cyberspace elements are only a part of the experience. The additional elements, like the Coco and some of the robots that you fight, are also very well done, I think. You retrieve the Coco from various locations and you help them out along your journey. And the one of the final cutscenes that you experience at the end of the first island kind of makes me think the Coco may be related in some way to the lore of previous games and creatures that have already been established within the universe. So that's pretty cool. I'd like to see where the lore of this game goes because it's really interesting. So overall, good storytelling, I think, and decent gameplay. There's also, of course, some of the more bonus-like areas like the Big the Cat fishing minigame which I really enjoyed. The Big the Cat thing, I ended up having a nightmare about him chasing me through Kronos Island a few weeks ago before I even unlocked the fishing minigame, and I was like, what in the world? But he's not that intimidating. I mean, he's always been a little bit of an off-putting character to some people, and I know that, but... I remember him as Big the Cat from Sonic Adventure DX that I played on my old family computer, and I have fond memories with him, so it was good to see him being acknowledged again in a mainline game, and once you unlock the Big the Cat fishing area, you c can come back to it, and there's a currency that you must spend to fish in this area, but... It's pretty easy to come across, so I wouldn't worry about getting locked out of any lore or details that you find in this area. The fishing minigame has a shop where you can buy things for your journey, and there's also a kind of fish encyclopedia, sort of like they have in Animal Crossing. And it tells you information about each item that you catch, which is pretty nice. I will say, I don't know if there's more things to catch in the next 
coming up areas. But I got through the entirety of what was available to be caught pretty quickly. And it almost seemed like there was a pattern to it. So I don't know if it's completely random or if it kind of cycles through. But overall, it's a fun little break from the main action. And I think it's well worth experiencing. And then when you are finally able to move on from the main area of the island and face the Titan as supersonic, that's a lot of fun. I ended up getting it on my second try. I probably would have done better on my first try if I had collected more rings before entering the fight. But I did okay with it. And what's cool is a lot of the moves that you can perform as regular Sonic still work as Super Sonic. So just experiment with what you can accomplish as Super Sonic and regular Sonic for that matter. He has a lot of moves that... He's never had before, and that's pretty interesting. I will say a lot of the combos that you can learn from the skill tree, I find it difficult to execute them with the button wrapping they're trying to have me use. But there is also an additional feature which allows the combos to go off automatically, and I have that enabled. So it does a little bit less damage, but at least I can actually accomplish the combos that way. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with the controls, but... It's just, it may just be a personal thing. But beyond that, I think the whole game is a really spectacular thing. And I'm hoping that as I continue through it, it gets better and continues to be what we need from the franchise right now. Which I think, hopefully, it is. And I do definitely still stand by my little thing that I said where I'm pretty sure the reason that they invested in Sonic Speed Simulator is so that we could get more used to a little bit more open-ended gameplay in this franchise. And I think it's definitely going to pay off in the long run. I don't know if I'm going to want this to be the formula going forward, but at the very least, it's a nice change of pace for the series, and I think it's really well done. That's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.